Good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this Thursday, October 7th. Thursday, October 7th. It is good to be with all of you this morning. Um, still trying to navigate this new uh, computer that I'm using, but um, I'm so glad to be with all of you today. And um, let me take a minute to say good morning. Just a reminder, um, I can only see people that leave comments on this platform. So if I don't say good morning to you, uh, I apologize. It's just that I don't see you unless you put a comment. So good morning, Priscilla, and good morning, Barbara. I'm glad you're here with us holding you in prayer this day. Good morning, Minda, and good morning, Daniel. I am glad that you are both here holding you in prayer as we start this day together. Good morning, Vanessa and Rosetta. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. And good morning, Margaret and Macon. Um, welcome. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Good morning, Yolette and Renetta. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. And good morning, Vinette and Celia. Welcome. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Good morning, Michelle and Esther. Welcome, holding you in prayer as we start this day together. And good morning, Marilyn and Genevieve. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. And good morning, Susan. And I, I'm i not sure if I said good morning to you, Barbara, but I'm going to say it again if I did. Good morning. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer this day. Good morning, Karen and Debbie. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer as we start this day together. And good morning, Augusta. Welcome. I'm glad you're here as well. So um, our devotion this morning comes from 1 Corinthians 2, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 6 through 16. 1 Corinthians 2, 6 through 16. So if you want to open up your Bibles, um, that's where we're going to be starting today. And I'm back with New Morning Mercies. I'm just going to be hopping around a lot lately. Um, um, so back in Paul David Tripp's book, New Morning Mercies, today. And um, anyway, as you open up to, to 1 Corinthians 2, my name is Cindy Stauffer, and I am blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And I'm glad you found us here this morning. I hope this time... Uh, will be uh, rooting for you, uh, not only rooting for you, but uh, rooting you in God's word and in this time of prayer with one another as we seek to be more faithful in our walks uh, with Jesus. So let's jump in to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 16. And before I before I read that, I'm going to sit, I'm going to share with you this grace, grace causes us to be alive to God and causes our eyes to be open to spiritual realities. We once had no capacity to see. So this is first Corinthians two, six through 16. Yet among the wisdom we do yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person, which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. 
Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. And we impart this in words, not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of God so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of God. There ends our reading for this morning, and this is what our devotion says. This really is one of those that say it all passages. It confronts us with our inability to see and understand the things of God. Things that are critical not only for knowing God, but also for living life as God designed it to be lived. You and I can't, you and I simply cannot know all we need to know in order to be what we're supposed to be and to do what we're supposed to do by means of personal experience and collective research. There is a body of wisdom that comes to us only by means of revelation. God first reveals his wisdom to us in his grand redemptive book, the Bible. And then God opens our eyes and our hearts so that we can receive and understand what God has revealed. Without this ministry of illumining grace, these things would be at worst completely concealed from us and at, and at best a whole lot of foolishness to us. We need Christ to come to us by his spirit to reveal his mind to us that we can think his thoughts after him. All of this is vitally important because one of the things that sin does to us is turn us into fools. Sin brings with it a functional insanity from which we all need to be delivered. So here is delivering grace that opens the eyes and understanding of our hearts so that we may know God, know God's grace and seek and receive the life that only God can give. This is challenging. I love that statement that sin turns us into fools. Um, I definitely am challenged continually um, sorry, I'm multitasking, trying to figure out how to scroll down here. There we go. Um, I am definitely challenged by the need to question what's going on, right? Okay, so here's an example. This week, something happened in my life that didn't go the way that I thought it should have gone, right? There were things that were laid out things that looked like the perfect plan, right? That God, the God, God's plan and my plan were all aligning and everything was working right and it all failed. And my first instinct was like, get back to the, to the drawing board and make it happen, Cindy, make it happen. Because obviously this is the right plan. But I had to pause and say, Maybe this isn't God's plan. Like, maybe I need to go back to prayer and figure out what God is saying in the midst of this. And that's really challenging 
because we, even things that look good, look like they should be part of God's plan. Our tendency is to think that we've got to push it through. We've got to make it happen. Um, and we do it without prayer. We do it without asking God to help us to see. We just kind of like, it, it looks like it should be good, so it should be good. And in the midst of that, you miss seeing so much along the way. And when I went back to prayer, when I went back to, to seeking God's will, I began to see other things that were happening. And I realized, I still don't have the answer, but I realized that what I thought was the answer was not the answer. And so how do we live in such a way that, that we can understand more fully? And, you know, people will ask me, Pastor, how do you know the will of God? <laughs> I don't. You know, I really don't. I have to seek it daily. I know it's not the will of God. Like, there are things that are obviously not the will of God. But... There are other things that we have to continually be seeking. And a lot of it is being open each day, starting each day saying, God, show me what it is you need me to see this day. Use me in ways that will bring glory. And, and it also means a, continually, um, a continual connection Seeking God in God's word, seeking God in prayer, seeking God by being open in each moment, right? I think it was yesterday we talked about, like, or maybe it wasn't, but I have so many devotions, it's hard for me to remember where I am each day, but um, like, God is not, oh yeah, this was yesterday, God, God is not um, over there or over here, God is. God is all in the all, and um, and God is in this moment. So if we are seeking God, we've got to be present in this moment, keeping our eyes and our ears and our heart open to what God might be saying to us this day. And so I know that there are things that all of you are trying to figure out, um, trying to figure out whether you're walking in God's will, trying to figure out if this is the right path. And the best answer I can give you is to seek out God, to be in prayer, to be in, in times of studying God's word, to continually seek God. Um, functioning. <laughs> yeah, because if all we are seeking is our will, and trying to impose our will on God's will, we will lose track. We will become functionally insane. We need to be listening always for what God is telling us this day. And sometimes it means we've got to be still. Ooh, that's not easy. Well, for some it is. It's not easy for me. So this day... I'm bringing things to prayer, things that I need God to help me see more fully. And I know that all of you are as well. So as we come into this time of prayer, I encourage you to open your hearts, open your minds, take a deep breath and ask God to show you the way this day, to show you the path ahead to reveal and know God's grace as it works in and through your life. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, Lord, we need your mercy each day. Too often, we have forced our will and called it your will. And sometimes, Lord, it looks good, it looks right, but it isn't where you are calling us. And so today, Lord, we lift up to you all of the situations, 
all of our pain and loss, all of our disappointments, all of the desires of our heart to you, that you might lead us. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. We need to see you. We need to know you. So guide our steps this day, not in paths that we desire, but in paths that you have planned for each of us, plans, paths that will lead toward life and wholeness. Guide us this day. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, where is God leading you this day? Praying that the eyes of your heart will be open, not my will, but yours, Lord. Yes, thank you, Debbie. Um, praying for each of you this day. Tomorrow, Princess is going to be sharing with you. Hillary, um, just so you know, um, and I'm going to announce this uh, today, but um, Hillary has um, been so involved with her acting recently, and so she's not going to be able to share with us, um, but still a huge part of our faith community, and we pray for her in uh, all of the ways that God is leading her. Uh, some really wonderful things have been happening, and so we want to keep Hillary in prayer, um, but she won't be with us tomorrow, but uh, Princess will, and so uh, I know you will enjoy that time with her. Um, have a blessed day, my friends. God loves you. God loves you. And so do I. I will see you on Saturday. Bye, friends.